Hey friends, Katie Z here. I thought we would spend a little bit of time today uh, in a critically thinking mindset, looking at what the characteristics of white supremacy culture are and how they might be showing up in your yoga class, especially if your teacher looks like me, okay? So I'm, um, I'm actually, <laughs> ironically, <laughs> I grabbed this from a, a, a government website in Texas, Texas, but the the um, the source is from Dismantling Racism, which is a um, a workbook for social change. So the first characteristic of white supremacy culture, and I just want to say, like as I'm going through these, I'm also contemplating the wellness space as its own culture because it is. And it's a culture rooted in appropriation. So that alone <laughs> aligns us with supremacy culture in the space. But here we go. Um, perfectionism. Uh, whoo. So pointing out how a person or work is inadequate. Diet culture. Only skinny people in yoga journal. And I don't know if you remember Diane Bondi a few years ago went through this whole thing. She's a um, black woman of size. Uh, she's a fat black woman. And where she was either like not able to be in the journal or not being hired because she's fat. And she wasn't correct. Perfectionism. Little time, energy, or money put into reflection or identifying lesson learns that can improve practice. How many of us, myself included, have been just invited out of spaces where we have said, hey, perhaps we could address this thing because of equity? Looking at you, yoga studios that were like, oh, fuck masks. We'll just let all the poor people die. Okay. Because they can't do this anyway. Again, I'm speaking broadly culturally, and yes, I do have some <laughs> feelings about this. I, that's the cat on the side. We're, hi, Katie, come over here. Second thing, sense of urgency. So a sense of urgency makes it difficult to take time to be inclusive, encouraging democratic or thoughtful decision-making to think long-term or to consider consequences. I have a personal example of this um, recently where, Miss Ma'am, Kitty cat. That is not the kitty cat space. Sorry, she was climbing on my bolts. Um, so, um, just you know, a, a COVID moment where um, I was asking about how this space holder was going to address public safety with re specific regards to wearing masks. And what I got back was very interesting. What I got back was, I don't want to like cause a scene. I don't want to do that. And then also like, there's just too many ideas, too many people, too much, too much. We just need to get the event happening. Sense of urgency. Um, and that this frequently results here. Enjoy the cat while I'm looking while I'm doing this, um, and that the sense of urgency results in sacrificing allies for quick or highly visible results. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm an ally, but I have absolutely been sacrificed and other people have as well. And by the way, I'm sure I have sacrificed because I am part of the system. Defensiveness, that the organizational structure is set up um, to prevent Wait, hold on. Organizational structure is set up and as much energy spent trying to prevent abuse and protect power as it exists, rather than facilitate the best out of each person to clarify who has power and how they are expected to use it. All we have to do is look at Jiva Mukti, Bikram, um, who's the spiraling guy, John Friend. Um, they're all, I mean, almost every, especially penis wielding, Western um, yoga person in particular is problematic. So, um, and then the defensiveness also 
um, according to this, is exacerbated by either or thinking. And that's in and out, we'll get to that. The antidote that's offered here is to understand that a structure cannot in and of itself facilitate or prevent abuse of one of the people in it. But you need to be like looking at yourself and looking at the power differentials and looking at how the seeking of wellness is potentially creating oppression. And, and in that seeking, we can be aware of it and we can be curious about it and we can be thinking about it and we can be addressing it and we can be doing the work. All of that can be happening, I believe. Another one. Quantity over quality. All resources of the organization are directed towards producing measurable goals, things that can be measured or more highly valued. So quantity over quality is absolutely true, like in business, business. But the way this shows up in wellness, give us your social media accounts. And if you don't have enough followers, you can't play in our playground. We don't give a shit whether or not you're actually like good at what you do, and I'm speaking to social media right now, what we care about is your numbers. That's what matters. Um, there's um, discomfort with emotion and feelings, and we can get, that goes back to this concept of like, I don't wanna upset anybody because then everything, there's not enough. Um, so an antidote here is to make sure the value statement is expressed in a way that you want to do your work. Um, next one, worship the written word. If it doesn't exist in a memo, it doesn't exist. The organization does not take into account or value other ways in which information gets shared. I'm not so certain how this shows up in wellness. Oh. Could have been the Bible, but we also, do you, do you notice, I mean, I notice where it will be like, Patanjali wrote this 6,000 years ago. And so because of these seven words that have been translated, that's what these mean without context. Or um, um, even Mr. Iyengar, like Iyengar's books, people, mm. yes, actually. <laughs> I worship that written word. I'm I am guilty of that. I'm just looking over. So I have I have light on yoga, which is very well used, and then I have a big picture book of him, his that I got my mother, that I I use, and that's where I go. That's what I go to. Um, it, but the, the the this idea that there's only one right way. Another place where this shows up in the Western yoga scene is with that rapist Bikram Chowdhury, who of course spent many, many, many years, who knows what he's doing now with this threat of copywriting yoga. Um, and that's interesting because he is from India, but boy, has he just, mm, he's a good capitalist. Paternalism. Those with powers don't think it's important or necessary to understand the viewpoint or experiences of those for whom they are making decisions. And this speaks very directly to what I was saying just a bit ago about how these wellness spaces operate in larger community and whether in wellness we are considering the impact of our actions, the effect that it could have around us. I'm gonna go back to masks. I'm gonna go back to vaccines. I'm gonna go back to, um, you know, even just having guidelines about touch in a studio or, um, you know, accessibility, being honest and transparent about accessibility. It's not always there. Uh, this either or thinking, binary thinking, you're advanced or you're not, you're in the group or you're not, you're pretty enough or you're not, you're thin enough or you're not, you're advanced or you're not, you're flexible or you're not, you're stronger. I mean, that's all the wellness is. And then you also get this either or thinking with like, um, uh, what is that? Big pharma is bad. We, we can't have any like Western anything. We can only have 
indigenous medicines. We can only have plant medicines. We can only have this because that's the right way. And this is the wrong way. And the inflection point is where is this person going to make their money? Sorry, that's just true. Power hoarding, I don't even think we need to go into that because any time there's a person who looks like me, we are hoarding power because we're so used to having it. Fear of open conflict. This is something that has gotten me into so much hot water. Um, yeah. In fact, I would say that the fear of open conflict is the thing that is going to bite me in the ass every time because I do not fear open conflict. Um, I fear <laughs> harm, <laughs> right? So um, the um, I have experienced this directly with like a space holder asking me to fire one of her employees because she didn't want to have the conversation because I have a background in human resources. Okay, fear of open conflict. Well, what if we talk about diversity and inclusion? What if we talk about the problematic nature of, a, a, you know, like including flipping multi-level marketing products in your offering, right? Where you're obligating somebody <laughs> to hurt themselves financially in order to be part of your thing. Or the conflict of um, especially equity and how um, the ableism inherent in the system really does not have a lot of space for consideration. That's why these spaces are so, right? Individualism. Um, me, 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 I, 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 this lack of accountability is the organization values, those who can get things done on their own without needing supervision or guidance. So this shows up in wellness with, through a lack of supervision, through a lack of accountability, through people going to Costa Rica and doing your thing for two weeks or staying at home or whatever. And then you get your certification and you go out and you're doing the thing and you have no, who, who are you checking in with? Who's helping you make sure that you're operating ethically? Who's helping you sound out? Like, am I helping? Am I harming? How am I showing up? It's unusual for facilitators in this space to have supervision. I am unusual. I have yoga supervision. I have sex education supervision. I'm, and I am fucking checking off some things here because I, I really think it's uh, important. I think it's very important. Um, the progress is considered um, an expression of more, okay, physically. Physically. If you ask somebody, what does an advanced practice look like? You might hear this again, we're talking about supremacy culture in wellness spaces. You're gonna hear an advanced practice is I can touch my legs over my head. I can bend over backwards. I can do a full split. I can do a handstand. I can do a thing. I'm not like advanced. Can I share with you that my practice, the most advanced I have ever practiced, I was paralyzed from the waist down. The most advanced practice and advancing practice is what's happening inside. It is not how it looks outside. So a person can bend over backwards, touch their head to their toes and be completely checked out. And I would say that is not yoga. They could be completely present and it is, but you can't tell by looking. And the progress is, it's like this, it's so, minuscule and we're just planting seeds and it takes time and it's um, subtle. And yet supremacy culture says it needs to be bigger, it needs to be more, I need to have the this, I need to have the that, the all that. Objectivity. Um, so supremacy culture says that there is a thing as objectivity and this show <laughs> up in wellness spaces as 
um, people selling programs. If you do these five things, you will have this outcome. If you do these five postures, you will find this result. If you use these essential oils, your cancer will go away. That there's some kind of like linear cause and effect. That's not how the world is. The world is so complex, so dynamic, so many layers and levels and attributes and considerations. So we have the perspective that we're in um, and yet we, it's not a linear process. It's a qualifying experience. Like it's not quantity, it's quality. And remember, supremacy culture says how much is, is much more important than how is the right to comfort. Supremacy culture says, I believe I should be comfortable. So in the wellness space that would show up as people not being willing to have a conversation. Who wants to have a conversation with me? Let's do it. See ya.